With Joey, we talked about alcohol. We talked about, you know, illegal drugs. We didn't know we had we needed to talk about prescription drugs, and I do believe that would have made a difference. At least he would have been making an informed choice and a decision, you know? Um, so that's the crux of our, our work. 95% uh, of it is all around education, and I, I find every opportunity in the world to talk to people. They don't escape me very easily. So there's the formal presentations I do. I do a lot of uh, ninth grade health class presentations. I do parent ed things. Uh, I go to conferences and present to all sorts of people in those and professional organizations as well as, you know, whether it's a parent conference or youth conference, whatever. Um, I'm out talking to community groups, you know, Rotary, Kiwanis, whatever that might be, because they're leaders of our communities and I feel like they can make a difference as they get out there once they know. I have found that once I educate people, they are out sharing the information too. At least 90, 95% of the work we do is around educating, uh, you know, community members, whether it be locally, on a county level basis, the state and, and beyond, even at the federal level. And then otherwise, we do get involved with legislative advocacy. So. Uh, I'm really proud of the fact that we now have March as a designated month for prescription drug abuse awareness. So uh, prescription drug abuse awareness month is the month of March in California. And it is signed uh, into law by the governor and that was by working directly with our state senator at the time, uh, Senator Desaunier, who's now a congressman. <laughs> So uh, there's been that, and then I've done a lot of work uh, in working to get our prescription drug monitoring program to the point it now is. Just this uh, couple of months ago, we had the governor sign into law the fact that our doctors are required to use our prescription drug monitoring program, not just sign up for it. That was required before. And so um, they have to use it as they're prescribing these opioids and other controlled substances. So where does this come from, you know? It's That's insane. Crazy. You know, if you get introduced to these medications as a young person, I can't tell you how many young people I've talked to, young adults, in recovery for the moment, who said they got their first their, their first high and their start with their addiction from that first dose of Vicodin that a dentist prescribed or for a sports injury, you know, they got prescribed to deal with the pain from that. It, it's just terrible. Our doctors are over-prescribing. And I'm talking about the primary cares. That's where most of these uh, prescriptions come from. So there's really kind of this misperception that we have young people abusing this stuff recreationally and they're, you know, they're the problem. But if you look at the statistics, it's like 35 to 45, you know, 35 to 55. You see more deaths in that zone than you do from the young kids playing around with this stuff. And they're getting hooked on it younger, they're getting a little bit older and then, or you have people that just, you, know, you get older, you have more problems, you know, you get prescribed this stuff that seems to be the first go-to thing they do instead of prescribing physical therapy or other things that could maybe give you, you know, relief. It's these pills and it it turns out horribly bad with a lot of people that have a predisposition because of genetic factors to addiction or whatever else. It's just terrible. American Greed Mondays premiere episodes 10 Eastern, CNBC. Get yours. Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.